Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Ankita Jain from DSPSR New Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module Trade Unions from paper Human Resource Management. Objectives After completing this module, you would be able to understand the meaning and purpose of trade unions, know the main objectives of formation of trade unions, put a light on the role of trade unions, come across the functions of trade unions, understand different types of trade unions, know the importance to workers and management, know about the duties and responsibilities of trade union, learn about the effectiveness of trade union in present scenario. Introduction to trade unions. As per Trade Union Act 1926, any combination formed primarily for the purpose of regulating the relations between workmen and employers or workmen and workmen or employers and employers or for imposing restrictive conditions on the conduct of any trade or business and includes any federation of two or more trade unions. We can also say that a trade union is an organization of workers that have banded together to achieve common goals such as better working conditions. The trade unions through its leadership bargains with the employer on behalf of union members, rank and file members and negotiates labor contracts, collective bargaining with employers. This may include the negotiation of wages, rules, complaints, procedures, rules governing hiring, firing and promotion of workers, benefits, workplace safety and policies. The agreements negotiated by the union leaders are binding on the rank and file members and the employer and in some cases on other non-member workers. Under the Trade Unions Act 1926, the expression trade union includes both employers and workers in organizations. The term trade union, however, is commonly used to refer to the organization of workers formed to protect the rights and enhance their welfare. V.V. Giri says that trade unions are voluntary association of workers formed together to promote and protect their interest by collective action. Main objectives of formation of trade unions and their role. The primary function of trade unions is to protect the interest of workers against discrimination and unfair labor practices. Trade unions are formed to achieve the following objectives. First, to negotiate. Negotiation is where union representatives discuss with management the issues which affect people working in an organization. There may be a difference of opinion between management and union members. Trade unions negotiate with the employers to find out a solution to these differences. Pay, working hours, holidays, and changes to working practices are the sorts of issues that are negotiated. In many workplaces, there is a formal agreement between the union and the company which states that the union has the right to negotiate with the employer. In these organizations, unions are said to be recognized for collective bargaining purposes. Second, to represent the problem. Trade unions represent individual workers when they have a problem at work. If an employee feels that he is being unfairly treated, he can ask the union representative to help sort out the difficulty with the manager or employer. Unions also offer their members legal representation. Normally this is to help people get financial compensation for work-related injuries or to assist people who have to take their employer to court. Third, to raise voice for decisions which affect workers. The economic security of employee is determined 
not only by the level of wages and duration of their employment, but also by the management's personal policies, which include selection of employees for layoffs, retrenchment, promotion, and transfer. These policies directly affect workers. The evaluation criteria for such decisions may not be fair. So, the intervention of unions in such decision making is a way through which workers can have their say in the decision making to safeguard their interest. Fourth, to provide services to members. During the last few years, trade unions have increased the range of services they offer their members. These include a. Education and training. Most unions run training courses for their members on employment rights, health and safety and other issues. Some unions also help members who have left school with little education by offering courses on basic skills and courses leading to professional qualifications. B. Legal assistance. As well as offering legal advice on employment issues, some unions give help with personal matters like housing, wills and debt. C. Financial discounts. People can get discounts on mortgages, insurance and loans from unions. D. Welfare benefits. One of the earliest functions of trade unions was to look after members who had hard times. Some of the older unions offer financial help to their members when they are sick or unemployed. There is considerable debate on the purposes and role of trade unions. The predominant view, however, is that the concerns of trade unions extend beyond bread and butter issues. Trade unions through industrial actions such as protests and strikes and political action influencing government policy establish minimum economic and legal conditions and restrain abuse of labor wherever the labor is organized. Trade unions are also seen as moral institutions which will uplift the weak and downtrodden and render them the place, the dignity and justice they deserve. Trade unions are unique organizations whose role is variously interpreted and understood by different interest groups in the society. Traditionally, trade unions role has been to protect jobs and real earnings, secure better conditions of work and life, and fight against exploitation and arbitrariness to ensure fairness and equity in employment context. In the wake of a long history of union movement and accumulated benefits under collective agreements, a plethora of legislations and industrial jurisprudence, growing literacy and awareness among the employees and the spread of a variety of social institutions including consumer and public interest groups, the protective role must have undergone a qualitative change. It can be said that the protective role of trade unions remains in form but varies in substance. Functions of trade unions Trade union is any association, temporary or permanent, for the purpose of regulating the relationship between employers, workers, or employer, employer, or worker, worker, for imposing restrictive conditions on trade practices. It includes federation of unions, referred as association of professional persons. In countries like England, trade union is referred as association of professional person. In India, it is concerned as 
Corsi Union Semi Union. In America, TU is considered as the association of all persons in a trade. Functions of Trade Unions Functions of trade unions can be broadly classified as follows. First, militant functions, that is protective. Militant functions of trade unions can be summed up as first, to achieve higher wages and better working conditions. Second, to raise the status of workers as a part of industry. And third, to protect labors against victimization and injustice. B. Fraternal functions, that is positive. Fraternal functions of trade unions can be summed up as first, to take up welfare measures for improving the morale of workers. Second, to generate self-confidence among workers. Third, to encourage sincerity and discipline among workers. Fourth, to provide opportunities for promotion and growth. And fifth, to protect women workers against discrimination. C. Intramural or extramural function. Intramural refers to welfare schemes and activities within the framework of factory premises, that is, safety, secure working environment, minimum wages, minimum working hours, and leave with wages. Extramural refers to the welfare schemes outside the factory premises that is medical assistance health care education etc types of trade union according to purpose under this head normally following types of trade unions have been kept first reformist unions these unions are those which aim at the preservation of the capitalist society and maintenance of the usual employer-employee relationship, elimination of competitive system of production. The reformist union have been subdivided by Hoxie according to objectives into business unions and uplift unionism. Second, revolutionary unions. These unions aimed at destroying the present structure completely and replacing it with new and different institution according to the ideas that are regarded as preferable. The revolutionary unionism is also of two types, namely anarchist and political. Dr. Hori also enumerates a third type of unionism, namely predatory unions and guerrilla unions. Types of trade unions According to membership structure, under this head, normally four types of unions are classified. A. Craft union Workers, those are working in simil same as similar type of work, trade or business. They have similar skills, specialization. Members are mostly non-manual workers. Members are craft conscious than class conscious. They take the membership on basis of similar type of work. They strengthen their union by integration of their members. B. Staff Union Organization Those are basing upon a sense of common status, same type of need. They try to seek their membership from non-manual sectors of the economy like clerical, supervisors, operators, technicians, craftsmen, etc. Unique feature of staff union was women workers were also members of staff union. Staff union gained popularity by taking women worker as their members. Third, industrial union. Irrespective of crafts, skills, grade, position, 
gender, etc. The workers working in one industry were members of industrial union. This union is more class conscious than trade conscious. And fourth, general union, it covers all types of industries. Labor class people from any type of industry can be members of general union. It is more open than the industrial unions. Their numerical strength is high. Trade union and its importance to workers and management. The existence of a strong and recognized trade union is a prerequisite to industrial peace. Decisions taken through the process of collective bargaining and negotiations between employer and unions are more influential. Trade unions play an important role and are helpful in effective communication between the workers and the management. They provide the advice and support to ensure that the differences of opinion do not turn into major conflicts. The central function of a trade union is to represent people at work, but they also have a wider role in protecting their interests. They also play an important educational role, organizing courses for their members on a wide range of matters, seeking a healthy and safe working environment is also a prominent feature of union activity. Some important social responsibilities of trade unions include First, promoting and maintaining national integration by reducing the number of industrial disputes. Second, incorporating a sense of corporate social responsibility in workers achieving industrial peace. Trade unions help in accelerated pace of economic development in many ways as follows. First, by helping in the recruitment and selection of workers. Second, by inculcating discipline among the workforce. Third, by enabling settlement of industrial disputes in a rational manner. By helping social adjustments, workers have to adjust themselves to the new working conditions, the new rules and policies. Workers coming from different backgrounds may become disorganized, unsatisfied and frustrated. Unions help them in such adjustment. At present, there are following central trade union organizations in India. AITUC, All India Trade Union Congress, BMS, Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh, CITU, Center of Indian Trade Unions, HMKP, Hind Mazdoor Kisan Panchayat, HMS, Hind Majdur Sabha, IFFTU, Indian Federation of Free Trade Unions, INTUC, Indian National Trade Union Congress, NFITU, National Front of Indian Trade Unions, NLO, National Labour Organization, TUCC, Trade Unions Coordination Center, UTUC, 
United Trade Union Congress and UTUC-LS Union United Trade Union Congress Lenin Sarani Rights and Liabilities of Trade Union First Disabilities of Unregistered Union A trade union shall not enjoy any of rights, immunities or privileges of a registered trade union unless it is registered. B. Immunity from civil suit in certain cases. No suit or other legal proceeding shall be maintainable in any civil court against any registered trade union or any officer or member thereof in respect of any act done in contemplation or in furtherance of a trade dispute to which a member of the trade union is a party on the ground only that such act induces some other person to break a contract of employment or that it is an interference with the trade business or employment of some other person or with the right of some other person to dispose of his capital or of his labor as he will. C. Liability in court. A suit against a registered trade union or against any member or officer thereof on behalf of themselves and all other members of the trade union in respect of any tortious act alleged to have been committed by or on behalf of the trade union shall not be entertained by any court. Second, nothing in this section shall affect the liability of a trade union or any trustee or officers thereof to be sued in any court touching or concerning the specific property or rights of a trade union or in respect of any tortious act arising substantially out of the use of any specific property of a trade union except in respect of an act committed by or on behalf of the trade union in contemplation or furtherance of a trade dispute. D. Liability in contract. Every registered trade union shall be liable on any contract entered into by it or by an agent acting on its behalf, provided that a trade union shall not be so liable on any contract which is void or unenforceable at law. E. Objects in restraint of trade not unlawful in case of registered trade union. The objects of a registered trade union shall not by reason only that they are in restraint of trade be deemed to be unlawful so as to render any member of such trade union liable to criminal prosecution or conspiracy or otherwise or to render void or voidable any agreement or trust. F. Proceedings by and against trade unions. A registered trade union may sue and be sued and be prosecuted under its registered name. Second, an unregistered trade union may be sued and prosecuted under the name by which it has been operating or is generally known. Third, a trade union whose registration has been cancelled or withdrawn may be sued and prosecuted under the name by which it was registered. Fourth, execution for any money recovered from a trade union in 
civil proceedings may issue against any property belonging to or held in trust for the trade union other than the benevolent fund of a registered trade union fifth any fine ordered to be paid by a trade union may be recovered by distress and sale of any movable property belonging to or held in trust for the trade union in accordance with any written law relating to criminal procedure sixth in any civil or criminal proceedings in which a registered trade union is a party such trade union may appear in such proceedings by any one of its officers or by an advocate and solicitor g strikes and lockouts no trade union of workmen shall call for a strike and no member thereof shall go on strike and no trade union of employers shall declare a lockout a in the case of a trade union of workmen without first obtaining the consent by secret ballot of at least two thirds of its total number of members who are entitled to vote and in respect of whom the strike is to be called b before the expiry of seven days after submitting to the director journal the results of such secret ballot in accordance with section 40 if the secret ballot for the proposed strike or lockout has been invalid or of no effect by virtue of section 2 section 3 section 6 section 9 of section 40 d in contravention of or without complying with the rules of the trade union e in respect of any matter covered by direction or decision of the minister given or made in any appeal to him under this act second any trade union which and every member of its executive who commences promotes organizes or finances any strike or lockout which is in contravention of subsection 1 shall be guilty of an offense and shall on conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding 2 third any member of a trade union of workmen who commences participates in or otherwise acts in furtherance of any strike which is in contravention of subsection 1 shall forthwith cease to be a member of the trade union and thereafter such members shall not be eligible to become a member of any trade union except with the prior approval of the director general in writing and the trade union of which he has so ceased to be a member shall forthwith remove the name of such member from its membership register inform the director general and the members concerned of such removal and exhibit in its registered office in a place where it may be easily read and a list of members whose names are so removed fourth the director general may where he is satisfied that subsection 1 has been contravened by any person and the trade union concern has failed to carry out the provisions of subsection 3 or where there is undue delay in doing so after such investigation as he deems necessary order the trade union to remove forward the names of the members concerned from its membership register multiplicity and effectiveness of trade union multiple unionism leads to multiple enrollment in unions and no subscribing members causing delay or failure to get recognition this restrains a union's bargaining power during a period of prolonged strife while the unions are squabbing among themselves for dominance the workers are deprived of their wages and the plant suffers a loss of production multiple unionism 
qualitatively weakens the movement resulting in formation of small sized unions without effective organization multiplicity and effectiveness of trade union however it may be noted that in spite of foregoing there are many organizations where multiple unions exist and the management does effectively negotiate and conclude agreements in many plants workers are unionized on a craft basis their special skills or training bonding them together multi unionism is more a problem where general unions exist for whom all categories can be organized in one general union so students let us summarize what we have learnt in this module the trade unions are organized by workers to solve their problems created by modern industry they are voluntary associations of workers formed to promote and protect their interest by collective action they play different roles for example they act as agents of the government and help in maintaining social discipline and administering its policies to achieve their objectives trade unions may employ variety of means depending on the attitude of the unions regarding the economic system in which they operate the degree of group and class consciousness among workers the nature of political organization and the nature and type of trade union leadership trade unionism in india suffers from a variety of problems such as politicization of the unions multiplicity of unions inter and intra union rivalry small size and low membership financial weakness and lack of financial weakness and lack of welfare facilities for the members weak bargaining power reliance on litigation and strikes and dependence on outside leadership this vicious circles have adversely affected their status and bargaining power and must be broken at as many points as possible the factors that make a trade union strong and healthy and unflinching adherence to the union's constitution and rules regular payment of dues fully representative character of the union cooperation with sister unions and a sound leadership a methodological organization with an enlightened labor force is essential